believe that there are some keys to getting prayers answered in the spirit. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you are tired of prayers being unanswered, you need to pay attention to what I'm preaching to you tonight because I'm going to give you something that gives you a key on how to get prayers answered from God. There was a very powerful prophet that lived back in the 50s and 60s, died way too young. His name was Verbal Bean. He was a very powerful man of God. He was a man of prayer. He, he was a powerful man of prayer. He said there were two types of prayers that God answers. He said there are two types of praying that will get God's attention. He said the first type of prayer that God answers is a memorial prayer. It's something that you pray about over and over and over and then God answers it. He said like Cornelius when he prayed so many times that the angel of the Lord said your prayer and your giving has come up as a memorial before God. He said it was like this he said if a man wanted to buy a suit but could not afford the suit he would go into the suit store with the money he had and put the suit on layaway with the funds that he had next time he got paid he would put some more funds down on the suit he would not leave with the suit he would leave without the suit each time he went in to make a payment but the more payments he made on the suit when he could make them there would become a day when he would finally pay off the suit and when the last payment was made, he could take what he had been paying for home with him. He said, that's how it is in your prayer life. You can be praying about something over and over and over and not take the answer home. If you keep praying and you keep believing, there's going to come a day when you bring the answer home with you because you've paid it in full. <laughs> Hallelujah. And praise the Lord, everybody. It's been a long time, my goodness. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Excited for what God's about to do here. I give honor to the old sins. I hope you just will give it your best shout right now and get loud and clap your hands for them. Amen. Praise God. Love them very, very much and appreciate their warmth to our family and God is going to do great things tonight. I just got back from a nine service revival last week and God filled 20 people Sunday with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Several people were healed. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And I'm excited for what the Lord is going to do tonight. Book of 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and we're going to read verses 6 and 7. What a great crowd there is tonight and great atmosphere and so glad to be home. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sunday, I have to preach four times this coming up Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm here tonight. This is, this is nice. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 and 7. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. I want to talk to you tonight about the faces of fear. The faces of fear. Lord Jesus, I worship you and I praise you for what you're doing among us. I magnify you for your glory and for your word. Bless this people tonight. Do what you planned on doing in Jesus' name. Have your way tonight. Let there be demonstration of your power. In fact, we praise you in advance for something only you can do tonight. We magnify you that you're going to show up and do something only you can do. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Everybody in this building is made out of flesh, but everyone has a human spirit. The human spirit is the thing in you that picks up on things and discerns things. And I've told you before that you can walk into a room and see someone you've never met and your human spirit can all of a sudden not like that person or like that person. And you've never met them before. It's your human spirit connecting or clashing with that person and your your personality or your human spirit can be very strong-willed it can be very laid back very easy going 
and everyone has a human spirit and so you understand there is a spirit world and there are angels and devils that fight in this thing the bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and all these different things that are roaming in the air and in the atmosphere and so spirits when they are at work they're not behind every bush or every corner or every treetop but when they are at work um, there's there's usually two different types of ways i've learned in all these years of evangelizing that they attack either a person or a group or a church or a family and there's usually different kind of masks that they wear there are there are strong i'll call them masculine spirits for the for the sake of this message that are very easy to pick up on they're defiant they're a uh, rebellion for instance is a strong masculine spirit a non-worshipping mentality that's usually very easy to see when someone's a non-worshipper that has the holy ghost it's a strong spirit that's on them there's different types of spirits that are very strong that are very easy for someone you don't have to be a a prophet to pick up on some spirits when they're in the atmosphere you just know that they're there that person struggling with this that person struggling with that because the spirit on them is so strong it's easy to see where other spirits are more I'll say the word feminine or, or deceitful they work behind the scenes they're not they're not so strong they're not up in your face uh, spirits like adultery and lying and deception and these are spirits that work behind the scenes that that uh, sometimes you can't pick up on uh, I had a pastor friend one time asked me, he said, how come I can pick up on rebellion in my church? I can pick up on someone uh, uh, just absolutely defying me, not submitted to my authority, but I can't pick up on the, the couples that are doing terrible things behind the closed doors and committing adultery. I just don't understand. How can I be a man of God and see that and not see this? And I said, it's kind of like the Sambalot Tobiah principle. Uh, these two guys that came to Nehemiah when he was building the wall, Sambalot was named means strength he was boisterous and tried to challenge nehemiah come off the wall and fight and, and nehemiah said no leave me alone and then nehemiah builds the wall and everything's peachy perfect and then when the wall's done the very last chapter nehemiah goes in the church and there's tobiah the other guy hanging out in the sanctuary because leadership let him in and so and he says he's the hidden spirit and what i said to this pastor was you've got a very strong uh, anointing very strong spirit and so it's and when you start to preach and those those the Defiant spirits, they challenge you, they rise up. But those other spirits, they duck down behind the pew and they don't want you to pick up on them because they know you will cast them out. Where are you going with all this? Fear is a spirit. But fear masks itself in different ways. Sometimes it's very strong and boisterous, and sometimes it's very deceitful. And so I've come tonight with a desire from the Holy Ghost and a word from God to expose whatever it is that's in your house or on your child or in your family. Because when fear is exposed, it has to be removed. But make no mistake about it, it is sure enough a spirit. You can roll your eyes at me and think I'm crazy, but if you're dealing with fear, sweetheart, you've got a demon in your house, and you cannot think anything about the preacher, but fear has been a spirit since the beginning of time. And that spirit loves to work on the child of God. That's what the devil unleashes on the planet, the spirit of fear. Amen. And I believe without a doubt there's different faces to it. I was in church a couple weeks ago and God began to talk to me during the service about all this. And I began to write it down during church. He said the first face of fear. He showed me four during the service. The first face of fear is the face of Goliath. It's the face of taunting fear. It's a fear that comes that, that tries to tower over a child of God. And this fear, and this is going to shock some of you, he said this fear usually does not attach itself to you like just some some demon coming into your room and scaring you this spirit gets on a family member and the family member lets the demon in the house it's when David shows up to a battlefield his big bad brothers have been paralyzed with a spirit of fear from Goliath and they said because we're afraid and we're bigger than you you should be afraid and people that live in fear always want other people to live in fear 
I've never met someone who's captured by fear that believes in God can do anything. I've never met people that walk in fear that have much faith at all. And in fact, when I start talking faith to them, they start telling me things like, well, be careful how what you say there. Be careful what, you, what your tone is there. Because they live in a dimension of fear. It's the Goliath dimension. Something taunts them. Something intimidates them. You see, when a Goliath spirit comes to you, everyone talks about how tall he is and not the breadth of time he was allowed to terrify and to come at the children of Israel 40 days he sat there every day and said send me out a man and this spirit this taunting spirit he what he does is he says send me a man to fight me alone one of the first attributes of the spirit of fear is to get you to fight it by yourself Goliath does not want to take on the entire church of Pentecost but what Goliath wants to do is get you alone in your bedroom and terrify and taunt you and say you'll never be anything you'll never get over what happened you'll never be used of God I feel the Holy Ghost up here you'll never be mighty you'll never be anointed you'll never be all the way delivered it's a taunting spirit you've got to look that devil up in the eye and say sooner or later I will knock you down before this thing is over you can yell at me you can taunt me you can mess with my family but I will fight back when this thing manifests Goliath had elders afraid, had the leader afraid, had everybody afraid. Saul was in fear. Everybody was in fear. And all of a sudden, there comes this kid. And because he's not afraid, they think he's arrogant. They think he's cocky. They think he's full of himself because he's walking in faith and not fear. And the taunter comes out and says, I dare you to send me somebody alone. Because fear works best in isolation. Send somebody to fight me by themselves. And when David walked out there, he said, I just want you to know one thing before we brawl. I'm not here by myself. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He said, you think you're fighting me, and I'm not here by a kid by myself, but I want you to know something. I'm not alone at all. I have a God who will fight for me. If you've got fear, you've got to learn to talk to it, sweetheart. You've got to learn to, I feel the Holy Ghost right there some of you have let the devil talk night after night week after week month after month and year after year and you never talk back if you want some victory tell him to either bring it or shut his mouth because you're not going to be paralyzed with a spirit that's taunting you I wish I had more than 10 of you right now that would say I'm ready for some victory up in my mind up in my family on my child in my marriage somebody praise the Lord for some victory that's coming to your house I said a victory it's coming to your family a victory is coming to your mind the second face of fear before I go to the second face David grabbed that rock and threw it it's so funny how Saul said put all this armor on Saul wants me to wear his armor that he's afraid to wear that ought to work you're afraid to even put it on but sure let me wear it be careful about people that always want you to do things their way in the spiritual warfare and they've never fought a devil on their own and Saul said where all this and David said I don't know how to work that but I know how to work a rock a rock and a rag all I can do is take this rock and throw it but I can hit a dime a far away I can hit anything I want to hit and so sometimes you've got to be able to trust yourself that even though you may not have all the giftings and all the stuff other people have to fight the battle what you you have been given by God your little gifting may seem insignificant to somebody else but you can take a giant town that others are afraid to even challenge if you'll stand up and say is there not a cause something is going to happen today when I fight for God and David said I'm gonna throw this rock and knock that giant town 
tonight there needs to be some Goliaths that fall. I said there needs to be some taunting spirits that fall. Some taunting demons that have told you you'd never get free that need to go down tonight. Someone needs to look the devil in the eye and say, I'm sorry. This is your last night taunting me. I've made up my mind to get victory over you. I've made up my mind to defeat you. I may never do anything else for God but defeat you. But make sure one thing, bro, you're going down. It's the victory. You've got to get it in your mind. Second face of fear. The face of Delilah. I told you how they can come in different ways. Delilah. Tormenting fear. See, Goliath brings taunting fear every day. Come on. Come on. Who's afraid to fight me? But Delilah. The Bible said every day she pressed Samson with her words and urged him and vexed him to the point of death. She made him suicidal because she was tormenting him every day. Now I'll show you what the spirit of fear in Delilah is. She kept saying, what's the secret to your strength? See, the tormentor wants to know the secrets of your past. Oh, it's just a matter of time, Samson. The Philistines are at the door. They're going to get you anyway. It's just a matter of time before you go down. Just tell me what happened 10 years ago. Tell me what happened 15 years ago. You see, the tormenting face of fear threatens you with exposure. That usually means it's in the atmosphere. <laughs> When a tormentor comes this child of God, the tormentor threatens something about exposing. And the tormenting, you know, the, Del the Delilah, her name is Delilah in the Hebrew. It means feeble and weak. And if you look up spirit of fear in the New Testament, in the Greek, it's Delia. It's very similar to the word Delilah, feeble and weak. But the spirit of fear can come through a feeble source. They, the Philistines could not beat Samson down could not chain him down could not do anything to him so they hired a feeble she was very small according to his story very weak and she comes in but she had a big mouth most demons do they're weaker than you think they are they're smaller than you if some of you could see what's been terrifying you you would laugh tonight and start shouting but the trick of hell is to get you to magnify what's been tormenting you and if you magnify it you make it greater than what it is but david said oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together so so david Oh, so Samson gets this woman on his trail and she's very weak. She's very feeble, but she's a snake. She's been hired by hell. And so she comes to him and she's like, just tell me the secret of your past. Tell me the secret of your strength. Anytime a human being is trying to find something about someone's past, they've got a devil on them. Because when you go past bloodline, I'm talking about Jesus' blood, and you go past it, even though beyond what he did for, with mercy and grace to find dirt on somebody, you've got a Delilah spirit near you. And she says, come on, Samson, tell me what happened. What's the secret? Oh, come on. And daily she pressed him. That means she screamed at him. And historians say that when he was on one side of the road, after a couple days when he, when he ran away and she kept tormenting, that she would walk on the opposite side of the road, historians say, and she would scream from her door, come on over here. Come on over here, Samson. Just tell me what it is. And she vexed him, made him suicidal to the point of death. And finally, he tries to relax. Watch this. When you are around the tormenting spirit, see, the taunting spirit wants to isolate you and get you away from everything wants isolation the tormenting spirit wants relaxation the tormenting spirits want you to be convinced that nothing's ever going to change and so you relax with the devil in your house that's just how I deal with it it's just I just got to think about it I just got to get alone for a while I just got to think and what happens is people get become accustomed to being tormented there are people in this room right now living in torment and relaxing in it.
could come to the altar with desperation to be delivered, but instead of coming with desperation to God, come chilled and relaxed, talking and not praying, because there's really no desire to be delivered, because Delilah has convinced them, it's just, it's really no big deal. I'm not really going to hurt you. I just want to know everything about you. And that spirit of hell, that spirit of fear, caused Samson to be so consumed, he wanted to die. He was so tormented. Finally, he said, here, here it is. If you cut my hair, I'll be weak like anybody else. And so they cut his hair and they cut out his eyes. And for two years, he walks around in a prison cell, pushing a millstone and listening to the voice of Delilah. Because the Bible says that when they, they took him out, she, they, according to the historians, that she mocked him and she screamed at him as he was being carried away. She called him a failure. And so for two years, she, he heard her voice tormenting him as he walked around in a prison cell. You'll never be free. You'll never get another chance to live for God. You'll never be great again. You'll never do anything again. You had your opportunity. Someone else will have to shine now. It's over for you. The tormentor was still talking. And when they dragged him out and he grabbed those posts, historians say, most all of them, Delilah was up on the roof. And they were mocking him and screaming things at him and tormenting him. I want you to see something so far. Goliath is really tall. Delilah's up high. Something I'm noticing about the spirit of fear, it makes you, it tries to make you feel inferior. You have to look up to it like it's something great. Samson, push anyway. Push anyway. And he began to push with all of his might. And everything fell and died. 3,000 people in one day. And he gets victory over the tormentor. You've got to make up your mind. If something's tormenting you, I will push until something breaks. You can't chill on Wednesday night and Sunday night during pastor's message and expect a demon to leave if it's tormenting you. You've got to make up your mind. I'll push if I'm the only one in the altar. I'll be desperate if I'm the only one desperate. You might roll your eyes while I'm crying my eyes out, but I'm still going to do something. I will push the pillar when others stand and watch. Well, what are you doing? It's Wednesday night. Sit back and be comfortable. Sorry, I've got something tormenting and it's attacking and afflicting and I must do something about it. Third face of fear, face of Jezebel. Threatening fear. Goliath's a taunting fear. Delilah is a tormenting fear. But Jezebel is a threatening fear. She threatened every prophet that got near her. Obadiah. She threatened Elijah. She threatened the prophets. She threatened Naboth. She threatened Jehu. Every, there's something about the spirit of Jezebel. The first attribute about a Jezebel, it, it threatens. That's what Jezebel does. Jezebel poses to have more power than what it actually has. Jezebel is a threatening spirit that always tries to be Ahab. She always posed as Ahab, wrote letters in his name, and it was never Ahab. It was Jezebel that was doing it, working behind the scene. And Jezebel threatens any real man of God or child of God that wants to live right. And Elijah would show up and she would threaten him. And Jehu showed up and she threatened him. Anyone that was doing something. And what was scary about it was the revelation says Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. And she thinks she's powerful and spiritual. But the truth is that spirit is absolutely evil. It's a threatening spirit that comes to a child of God that says you'll never have anything. I will take you out. I will destroy you. I will wipe you out. You will not have a future. Anybody heard that? voice lately a spirit telling you you will never be here. you're gonna die with that you're never gonna be delivered of that that's a Jezebel spirit it's a spirit that mocks yeah. Yeah. Jezebel by the way hates submission yeah. Jezebel hates it 
hates him because she was ran over like a dog in her death and then dogs ate her and so she hates anything that's powerful and even her in that face of fear she got up in the window and looked down old Jehu and here comes Jehu riding into town and the Bible says he was riding furiously he's driving his chariot and here her boy the, the prince Joram went out to meet him and he killed Joram he said I'm on my way to kill your mommy too and he went into the town and here's Jezebel up in the window and she paints her face and she said oh watch this most people read this and ignore it she said to Jehu and Jehu's the new king she's the old queen and she looks down and says hey had Zimri peace who slew his master Zimri was the servant of a king who killed the king and then the people killed him and so she said you think you're gonna have power very long when you do when Zimri tried and he was taken out by the people you're not gonna last at all the Jezebel spirit says you'll never last doing what God has positioned you now to do that's what a Jezebel spirit says you see it doesn't show up when you're just trying it but when you get a position I'm gonna talk to the leaders right now when you get a position in a church when you get a position at a company and something happens and all of a sudden then the voice starts coming and says you won't keep it very long you won't last very long you can't hold it very long you don't have enough character enough gifting you can't last for that's a Jezebel spirit yeah. only talks when it respects your position yeah. oh you're a prophet I'm gonna talk to you oh you're a king I'm gonna talk to you oh you've got a, a vineyard my husband wants I'm gonna talk to you whenever it represents something she wants to have that she cannot have that's the Jezebel spirit and Jezebel said, I'm gonna take you out and Jehu said you're gonna die and he said who is on my side and she's got two slaves up in the window and they said we're on your side and they grabbed her and threw her down but you know what she jumps back at the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation coming at the churches because that spirit is still alive and well today and that spirit gets on people it doesn't have to get on ladies it can get on men too spirits are not male and female they're just stronger and weaker but let me tell you they can get on a male or a female anytime oh, this is gonna get real quiet right here anytime a spirit convinces you to rebel against your authority and not be submitted it's a spirit of Jezebel whether you're a male or a female and get, you can get quiet all you want to when a spirit says do not submit to your leader do not submit to your pastor that's a Jezebel spirit wow I thought I'd get more than six of you right now. am I in Jacksonville I'm still not convinced that's patty cake we, we, we're better than that we're bigger than that we ought to know submission is authority and so when you submit you've got greater power and greater That goes for anybody. If you're not submitted, you can pose like you've got power. That's an attribute of old Jez. Posing like you've got power when you really don't have a clue. That's Jezebel. And it's a threatening face. And the fourth face of fear. It's the devil himself. It's death. Hebrews said the devil has power over death and then the next verse says there's a fear unto death death is terrorizing fear psalm said yea though walk through the valley of the shadow of I will no evil signify it would be normal to fear when death is near have you ever heard the term scared to because the greatest fear is That face, that death, that spirit is Satan. Read Hebrews 2. That's what the devil is. He is death. He is a murderer from the beginning of time, Jesus said. He's a killer. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The face of death is the devil himself. And it's a terrorizing fear. And I've come to talk to you about it right now. That thing that says you're going to die. You're not going to live. This is going to take you out. Some of you have had that voice talking. Some of you have defeated that voice. Yeah. 
But death is a terrorist. It's a terrorizing spirit. And that spirit shows up to attack someone. It doesn't hold anything. It brings something to the table to convince the child of God this is real. This is whether it manifests physically, whether it attacks something in their body, whether it's a, a spiritual death, where they where something's gonna happen where they're starting to die spiritually, something is near and it begins to terrorize the child of God. I don't know how many people I've prayed for in the altar, Pastor, with all all these years with diseases, and I can see it. I can see the ones with faith and I can see the ones with fear. I can see the ones that say I believe God's going to do it and I can see the ones that think I'm going to die and it's scary to walk up to someone to hope that they've got faith that God's going to do something but you can tell that something has convinced them it's already over and the Lord gave me this two weeks ago and I'm in church writing it all down and I get and I preach it just like this and I bring everyone to the front and I said, whether it's taunting fear, tormenting fear, threatening fear, or terrorizing fear, God wants to give you deliverance. Right? I said, these are the faces of fear. And I got ready to pray the prayer of faith and God stopped me and said, there's one more face of fear. And I said, um, what is that? He said, you can't see it. People can't see it. But devils can see it. I said, what is it? He said, it's trembling fear. Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and... That's about to get stirred up right now. He said, the face, the fifth face of fear is the face of the one God believer who is vocal enough to say that no matter what you're coming at me with, I will declare there's still only one God. His name is above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who's above all somebody ought to act like you know him through all and in you all if you want fear to leave you've got to declare i'm a believer in the one truth somebody get loud enough for hell to hear you right now let the demons tremble are there any one god jesus name holy ghost I refuse to die in fear. I know the Savior. I know the King of Kings. I know the Lord of Lords. I know the one true. What is his name? They're taunting me, but I'm a believer. They're tormenting me, but I'm a believer. They're threatening me, but I'm a believer. They're terrorizing my mind, but I'm a believer. There's still only one God. Somebody get the fear off the throne and get Jesus back on the throne. He can do exceeding abundantly above all you ask. You may feel nothing, but if you want devils to tremble, to start shouting it. There's only one God. There's only one God. There's only one God. There's only one God. Cancer's not God. Jesus is God. Fear's not God. Jesus is God. Worry's not God. Jesus is God. Anxiety is not my God. Jesus, Shataya, is my God.
I and my father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. I come in my father's name, he said. That's the oneness of the Lord. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know why some of you feel like walking right now? Because the shackles just fell off your feet and off your hands and off your mind. The devil cannot defeat you when you refuse to live in fear. You know why you want to run? Because you're not afraid right now. You know why you want to dance? Because you're not afraid right now. Who is your God? Who is your Savior? Who is your healer? I want you to look up here. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. And I don't care if it's taunting you, tormenting you, threatening you, terrorizing you. When I'm done praying the faith, prayer of faith, I will ask you, what's the name of the one true God? And when you shout his name, every devil in your house in your body, in your marriage, is going to leave you right now. Would you raise your hands and by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, we cast out the spirit of fear. What's the name of the one true God? Somebody shout his name. Shout his name. Shout his name. Let the devils hear you. Let fear hear you. Let anxiety hear you. You've got power over the enemy. You've got power over the enemy. You will not be afraid. You will not have nightmares. You will not be tormented. God is on your side. Whom shall you feed? Come on, kick that devil out. Kick that fear out. You've got a right to have praise. You've got a right for a victory. For the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. For the pulling down of strongholds, let fear come down. You're going down, Goliath. You're going down, Delilah. You're coming down, Jezebel. You're coming down, Satan. The Lord is on our side. There you go, man. I love it. Just keep shouting his name, Bubba. Devils hate that. Demons are trembling right now. What's the name of the one true God? What's the name of the one true God? Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Galilee. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my deliverer. Jesus, my Messiah. My way maker. My protector. My provider. My answer. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You will not be tormented. I declare to you in the Holy Ghost, angels are at your house already right now. They're waiting on you to be home tonight. You will not sleep in fear. You cock You will not be in torment. For the Lord is with you. And if God be for you.
platform. I feel a Holy Ghost fire on this platform. I feel a fire from heaven. I feel anointing to cast out devils, chase out devils. Some of you lay hands on someone beside you. Lay hands on someone. Because the Bible says perfect love casteth out all fear. Somebody pray in perfect love right now. Pray in Akonto Hasha. Pray in perfect love right now. Let the love of Jesus be loosed in this altar. You're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be terrified. Stop letting the devil lie to you. Stop letting the devil form accusations in your mind. Come on. God is with you. Somebody love somebody in prayer. Somebody pray in love right now. afraid don't be afraid the Lord's not gonna let it happen to you he's not gonna let you fall apart he's on you I said trust to Jesus trust in Jesus the devil's fear when you trust in Jesus some of you have been fearing something that's afraid of you and what you believe in it's afraid of who you believe in don't be afraid I rebuke intimidation I rebuke anxiety in the name of the Lord Jesus let there be anointing let there be authority I am a believer in the one true God period his name is above all names his name is all-powerful his name is a strong tower the righteous run therein and are saved his name cannot be defeated his name Hashona, cannot be challenged his name cannot be attacked his name cannot be abused his name will never go down his name reigns above all things jesus jesus You will not be afraid. Things that have made you afraid will no longer make you be afraid. You will not be afraid of being attacked in public. Koshata. You will not be afraid of someone invading your house. I curse that in the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak life into your body. I speak life into your mind. I speak life into your spirit. I release the gift of faith into you right now. In the name of Jesus. I release the gift of faith into you right now. You will not fear. You will not fear. In fact, I curse in the name of Jesus every spirit threatening, put, writing a play before you in your mind, telling you how it's going to happen, when you're going to be attacked, how you're going to be attacked. I bind that in the name of Jesus. That's a lie. They cannot do that. They are not allowed to do what they're saying. That's a lie from hell. You will not be attacked. God is with you. Greater is he that is in you than he...
Shana Marikosha. Can I ask the ladies to grab hands right now? Can I ask the men to form a circle or do something? Grab hands right now. Ladies, unify each other. You may not have the same fear the hand you're holding is having. You might have a fear, but you've got authority over the fear your neighbor has right now. You might have a fear, but your neighbor doesn't have the same fear you have. I want you to grab that hand in the name of Jesus. Command their fears to leave now. Command their worries to leave now. Tell them God's going to protect you. Tell them God's going to heal you. God's going to be there for you. God's going to rescue you. Let it roar in heaven right now. That's perfect love right there. That's unity right there. That's perfect love and unity right there. Where two agree touching anything, it shall be done. Somebody get loud enough for hell to hear you. We have victory in the name of Jesus. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. their voices in warfare right now let the men lift up their voices right now let the man chase off the spirit world let the ladies you already have access to the throne let the ladies intercede the spirit let the ladies pray the spirit that's the formula for the miraculous Warfare with intercession cast out the enemy and brings on the angels. There are angels among us tonight. The angel of the Lord is among us tonight. The angels of the Lord are among us tonight. Would you clap your hands and thank the Lord for victory right now? Would there be a spirit of victory that would rise up on you? Let it erupt in your soul. Let it erupt in your mind. Hallelujah. Second type of prayer is a current prayer. He said a current prayer is the second type of prayer that God answers. It's, it's a situation that you do not have, you don't have a long time for God to do this. You need God to do it now. Does that make sense? Yeah, you, you can have a lost loved one. You can, that's a memorial thing. You just pray until God does something. But you could have a situation where you need God to intervene now. And when you have that type of prayer, memorial prayer is not what you need. You can't just go bring the name up or bring the situation up in passing and say, God, I'm making another payment on this. I need you to come through. When the situation is desperate, it requires desperation in your prayers. A current prayer. You can't come with a situation, Brother Grant, that's tragic and real and severe and come to God and give God a, you know, Lord, what we're going through right now. And I need you to come through because the deadline is this week and we have to answer. We need some peace. We need a miracle and walk out. That's, there's no desperation there. You're giving God the right facts, but you're not giving God the heart behind the facts. You're showing God, I'm really not serious about this. Because a current prayer requires desperation. 
It requires you to be, I need an answer now. I don't have 60 years to pray about this. We need a miracle in our house. That is desperation. That's a current prayer. And a current prayer, God will hear. And I want to show you something, that, that the Lord answers prayers while you're praying them. I know that we've got God in this box that if I pray today, he can come through by Thursday or he can come through by tomorrow. He can come through by next month. But actually God, the Bible said, I can hear you before you even say what you're going to say. In fact, I need Jesus. I know what you're saying before you even ask. Yeah,